It started out as most cases do. I was browsing on the Galnet and caught wind of a curious event happening in the... I can't pronounce the system name. Uh, happening here, where I was going. Two moons of a nearby gas giant were on an intercept course to violate each other's exclusion zones. And this was the closest lunar collision to the bubble in recorded history, and the first to involve a planetary settlement. Now as such, Sosa Biological had put out a space tourism emergency beacon and was inviting explorers to come and witness the big event from the comfort of their moonside resort. Now many commanders rallied here to witness this event in all of its glory. But as we all know, when moons collide, the gravity makes the brain all fuzzy-like with what scientists call moon mania. And on top of that, when multiple commanders come together and open, chaos ensues. And so it was that Sosa Biological was about to find out what just happens when tourists and moonfall truly mix. We sat there and we watched the bright white moon slowly inch its way towards us. No one knew if it would actually hit the facility or not, but I suppose that was part of the thrill. With Rebuy technology, mankind has been able to experience all kinds of horrible new ways to die and live to tell the tale, like that guy. I myself still shudder when I think about the time my body was ripped apart by live Eckett sea worms. I was truly grateful for insurance that day. Now, I'd never been hit by a moon before, so even if the worst case scenario did come to pass, I'd have made progress for science, which means these resort fees could potentially be a write-off, which is good because I racked up a very large fire tab here. So I'm kind of on team moon, hoping it does collide. Oh, look at that, an aspect exploder. That's nice. It must be time for the moonfall ceremony already. Hey, you, get off my windshield, you dirty little pervert. All right, it's time for the ceremony. Sosa Biological was reaping in tons of tourist dollars today, and a contingent of guards stood watch over the moon -tivities, with rumors circulating that the guards had been under strict orders to make sure absolutely no contact with the tourist whatsoever. So I decided to put their dedication to the test with a little experiment. See, no matter how much I annoy these people, they aren't allowed to hit me or move, or they'll be deleted from the galactic NPC database. Now under that kind of pressure, I was impressed to see they weren't cracking. True professionals. But I hadn't finished my experiment. Now if roles were reversed and I saw a moon bad tourist coming at me in an SRV, you can bet your ass I'd be jumping out of the way, or just be damned. But these valiant and patient NPCs stood fast and took their boops like it was a breakfast enema. I found myself wondering if these people were on some kind of drug. Perhaps a new strain of onion head that turns your skin rock solid and your brain into oatmeal. Or maybe it was the years of training, breaking a rock with drops of water and whacking each other with meta-alloy sticks that carved these fine soldiers into the consummate professionals you see here today. Carry on, fine soldiers. Don't let this tiny little tourist smash your vibe. The moon will probably take care of that later. Anyway, well, that was interesting. Gotta go. What was that thump? That was weird. Oh my lord, he's killed Michael. We should defend ourselves. Why don't we shoot? You heard the orders. It'd be bad for tourism. Hold your position. I hate tourists! 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 With everything set and the moon's about to touch, all that was needed was a ceremonial moon dance to appease the lunar deity and invite it to crash into this outpost. I went about attempting to stir up a moon mosh pit, but of course, I'm not superstitious. I don't believe in moon dances. It's just that moon dances are a great way to stretch your joints in advance of the gravitational overlap of two celestial bodies. You see, by spinning really fast, you counteract the quantum gravity and create more bosons in your brain. I read that on the internet. Yeah, that's right. I'm learning how to read now. Did you guys hear? I can read. At least up to 12 words now. Anyway, my attempts to create a vibe seemed to be working as other commanders began to wiggle their joints and flex their spandex suits. My rhythmic squatting was creating a social tension that could boil an omelette, but all the while the moon kept coming at us, uncaring in its gravitational motions. It wouldn't be long before the great smashing. Sir, it's after curfew and they're blasting music, sir. Can we please engage them now? The orders stand. Let the tourists do what they want. As you wish, sir. Must follow. Orders. As the party raged on, more asp exploders lit things up. A sacrifice for our lunar god, who was clearly demanding blood. And then, a gang of commanders rode on a sidewinder after I told them a cheap way to get the best aerial view that your jetpack instructor just won't tell you about. Though, um, well, 
it didn't exactly work out for everyone, like poor Frosty the Snowman. Turns out that the snow people have just very brittle bones. R.I.P. Frosty, may you melt in peace. But it was time. The moons were now touching each other in physical embrace. The meeting of the moons had begun, and the gravity waves were now messing with my brain. But I wasn't the only one. Everyone on that surface felt their intelligence oozing out their ears. Moon mania was setting in at last. And so, the facility guards had decided to screw their orders and chase the tourists out, shooting willy-nilly at the very people that were propping up their economy. Completely disrespectful. And I retract my comments about their esteemed professionalism that I said earlier. This was quickly turning into Woodstock 99. So I decided there was only one thing to do. I needed to blow this popsicle stand and head directly into the crack and investigate this mystery from between both moons at once. Like riding into the eye of the hurricane, I turned my bio-waste filter on and faced certain doom with the kind of confidence that only an astronaut diaper can provide. I was mesmerized by the colors and the movement of the moons. Icy blue and cool white touching each other like Kris Kringle on Honeymoon with the Missus, and me getting a big wide view of the action. You see, other explorers wouldn't dare to come this close, but not this detective. I'm a brave commander who's seen the horror of space. Nothing scares me anymore. Uh, where did the light go? Uh, okay, okay, I'm scared, I'm scared. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This isn't trademark darkness. This can only be one thing. We're looking at dark matter, people. In huge concentrations, the moons are colliding so hard that dark matter is being squeezed out of space itself. But as I go to land, I realize the dark matter has created a gap in the fabric of space-time. And I find myself outside the simulation, looking in. Like that time I hid in the bush and watched Santa Claus bone his wife. Ho 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 indeed. Now I retreated from the darkness, hoping to find a parking spot in the nearby safety of Sosa Biological, only to find that somehow the dark matter must have gotten all over my hull, causing me to disassociate from normal space and pass through the ground like I was a, a rather rough kidney stone. Soon enough, I was trespassing under the base and angering the local tourism board even further, though in a way, deep down inside, I. I felt true freedom. Freedom from gravity. Freedom from physics. I had become a living ghost. I could go anywhere, do anything, as long as anything did not involve any kind of landing or ground-based activities. But I had theorized that the dual gravitational fields of both moons were canceling each other out, leaving me in a kind of Schrodinger state on both moons and neither at the same time. Now the only way to test this out would be to try and land on the other moon. If I landed, I'd have reset my superposition. But if not, then I'd potentially be stuck in limbo, caught between worlds like a private Mobius group between Solo and Open. Let's see. Damn, I passed through. But it was just then that I remembered that all Pilots Federation ships come equipped with their own Schrodinger dongle attached to their landing gear. By retracting and deploying my landing gear rapidly, I was able to cancel my superposition with another superposition, thus blowing myself up and back into the proper dimension. Science is dangus, my friends. Anyway, I decided to hire a taxi to fly me back from prison. Thankfully, a brave Apex pilot took the ride, though I may not have entirely disclosed the gravity of the situation at Sosa Biological. But to his credit, he didn't balk when we got there and took me straight to the jaws of the beast. So I tipped him, like, 15%, but honestly, these gratuities are getting ridiculous. But on the way down, what did I see but the flashing, reality-bending flicker of a Type 8 with a malfunctioning cloaking field, likely confused by the dual gravities. Now these are rare sightings indeed, but just add that to the basket of proof. They are out there. So please, stop with all the comments telling me I'm crazy. I am not crazy. Okay, maybe at this particular moment I'm suffering from a little moon madness, but this is extenuating circumstances and temporary hope. Anyway, I got fleet carrier maintenance to pay people, come on. As I left the taxi and put my feet on terra firma, I couldn't help but feel that something was wrong, mainly because my feet weren't touching the ground and I was locked in place. Gravity striking again. I struggled, attempting to unstick myself, all the cruel forces of nature had paralyzed me and made me unable to move. All I could do was watch as the pale light wall moved closer and wonder if I would ultimately be crushed by this moon or perhaps kicked by that Cobra pilot who seemed to be having speed fits. Also, I think I might be seeing anacondas come out of the ground. Okay, Spatula, it's just a little moon madness. Just relax. It's, everything's going to be okay. And with that, oh look, an orange phoenix showed up. He's going to help me get unstuck. Yeah, it's working. And it did work. I got unstuck for everything, except the life insurance bill. But coming back in my crate, I noticed the moon was even closer to Sosa. Things were about to get messy. Now, since the ground wasn't going to let me touch it, I went to land in the facilities pad, but forgot it's for small ships only. 
Uh, thankfully, I had my courier part nearby, and I went to go get it. But it was in that moment, when I was leaving these two colliding moons, that I was just awestruck at how damn cool this whole thing was. I mean, look at it! Isn't that cool? What is it? Hey, look at Orca! Hey, no, 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 no! Bad Orca! Bad Orca! Get out of here! Aw, oh, damn Orcas. Perv. Swapping into my tiny little courier, I raced back to the moons. Now, since the ground and I weren't getting along, I thought I'd try using a local asp as a landing pad. Alright, little buddy. Just get on down there and let me land on you. You can do it. Okay, stop. Stop resisting. The dark matter will let you go into the ground. Just, just, just relax. This would be so much easier if you just turned your flight assist off. Okay, everything's gonna be fine. That's it. That's it. Yes, become one with the dirt. You are the dirt! Okay, good, good. Now just hold still while I orient my landing gear and, uh, oh, damn it! Typical ass pilot never stays still when you need him to. Oh well. I whispered sweet apologies for all my previous crimes to the docking attendant, and to my surprise, Social Biological actually let me land on its pad, and I was able to touch down normally. But when I went to deploy my SRV, well, uh, have you ever decided to go grinding, and after two hours of setting up your ship for mining, you decide it's getting late, you just go to sleep instead? That's kind of what happened to me, with my SRV getting stuck mid-deployment. I couldn't move. No forward, no backwards, no up, no down. I was like a physical representation of ship constipation, poking out from under my courier like a deadly turtle head. I asked my fellow moon maniacs for help, and help was immediately rendered. I think my mistake was not asking for a very specific type of help, considering the creativity of commanders is more dangerous than a moonfall sometimes. Yes, I was in quite the predicament here, wondering what my options were and why everyone was suddenly interested in shooting at me. I'm just doing some science here, people! But suddenly, I was able to actually dismiss my ship. Of course, instead of fixing the problem, it got potentially worse, as my ship was now stuck wildly to the pad, and I was adhered in place, only this time stuck inside the ground. My ship was clearly suffering from its own computerized version of moon madness, and would need to be put out of its suffering for the safety of all the other tourists here. You just can't trust a courier on autopilot. I watched, frozen in horror, as the commanders made short work of my beautiful little steed. But even after Black Betty was sent to the farm up the road, I found myself still stoically stuck inside of the landing pad, unable to drive, all my freedoms removed. Even Space Prison doesn't limit you like this. But thankfully, Orange Phoenix was there, and once more with a technical boop, and by the mercy of RNGesus, I was given the power of float and began to gracefully soar off of the surface. Unfortunately, the, uh, the sight of a floating scorpion triggered the sportsman gene in the brains of the moon maddened commanders, and they began to toss me around like a football. Unhand me, sirs! I am a person, not a ball of sports! Seriously, people, I'm a, I'm a human being. Please, uh, this is hurting me physically and emotionally right now. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? This is actually kind of fun. All right, how about this? You put me into orbit. Yes, 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 boot me up, boot me to the moon, boot me to life! We have discovered new physics, ladies and gentlemen. Science is being done. No, 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 boot me up. No, 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 up, 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 not down. No, 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 down is ground. I don't want to go to the ground. No, 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 don't let me touch the ground. I don't want to touch the ground. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, no. Fall below the surface again. All is lost. I'll never get out of here. Uh, wait, what? Okay, I'm on the surface, and I can touch ground. I'm cured! Well, who thought the cure for anti-gravity is to become a football? Okay, this sounds like Moon Madness, Spatula. I decided the only thing left to do that was logical was drive into the crack. With all the darkness, I couldn't see that far ahead, but I felt it was still miles away. So I asked Orange Phoenix if I could hitch a ride, and he was gracious enough to let my SRV onto his ship. So I hopped on his wing, in an unconventional way and like a bucking bronco, grabbed on for dear life, as together we pushed through the inky blackness towards the gravitational anomaly and into the heart of Dengus. Two fearless investigators bumbling in the dark in pursuit of the unknown. But the path there was bumpy, and the gravity was behaving erratically, like a space Karen at a manager convention trying to redeem an expired coupon. I had received one too many knocks and found myself thrown off the space bronco, my powers of float stripped away by the dark matter, leaving me vulnerable to the ground. And, well, uh, I blew up. Again.
The moons were now moving apart, reality being restored to its normal, glitchy, bug-ridden state. I took a taxi back to Sosa Biological. There were still a few more hours in the all-inclusive bar tabs to take advantage of, and since the facility hadn't been destroyed by the moon, and since I'd have to pay the tab after all, I wanted to get my money's worth. Excuse me, ma'am, where is the open bar? Uh, hey, you need to answer me. Do you know how super important tourists are? Away. I said answer me! You asked for oh, this! Oh. And I was answered with a shotgun to my face. And so that ends the story of the two moons touching each other. Please like and subscribe for more Dangus. And 07 Commanders, I'll see you in the black. Fly Dangus. Bye!